Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel which focuses on income-oriented investing and generating passive income from a diversified portfolio of high-yield funds. So once again, it's time to unveil my entire portfolio from A to Z, your favorite video. So uh, if you invest on the Canadian or the American stock market and achieving financial independence is really important to you, please consider subscribing to my channel because the invest investing style that I cover, the income-oriented one, is in my opinion the best way to achieve financial independence as quickly as possible so if you're watching this video make sure you're watching the latest update because I usually do one every single month right so this video is portfolio update number 17 for September 2022 and I actually have a YouTube playlist dedicated to all my portfolio unveil videos as well uh, which I share with the whole world my entire journey so just a quick summary of my investment strategy and style and a few important reminders before I show you everything so please listen to this part if you're newer to the channel because I cover many of the common questions I get here. First of all, I'm Canadian, um, so the funds in my tax free savings account and my regular non registered cash account are all Canadian listed. They're listed on the Canadian stock market, the TSX. But don't exit the video if you're American be, uh, or invest in the US stock market because for my retirement accounts, I invest primarily on the US stock market. This is simply because as a Canadian, there's no additional 15% withholding taxes in a, a retirement account thanks to that tax treaty between Canada and the US. So stick around if you're American because I always show my retirement accounts first. So you'll see what are my favorite income oriented funds on the US stock market. So a quick note on my investing style now, I am a long, long term, if not forever, buy and hold income focused or income oriented investor. So the primary objective of this strategy is to generate high and consistent passive income via dividends and distributions every single month as safely as possible. So most, if not all my returns, everyone, does not come from capital appreciation. It comes from uh, the income that my portfolio generates on a monthly basis. So how do I achieve this? Well, my portfolio uh, invests in or primarily holds funds that invest in blue chip dividend stocks or indexes and use income enhancing strategies, most notably covered calls, leverage, and sometimes both. So they provide fairly consistent income and the intent is really to hold them long term, not to sell them later on, buy low and sell high. That's not what the strategy is about. That's the growth strategy. And also, I do not invest in any single companies anymore. Well, I have one left, but that's, you know, eventually I'll probably get rid of it. But going forward, I don't invest in any single companies anymore. Who wants that stress and anxiety? Not me, that's for sure. So uh, the strategy might not be fun. Uh, exciting more or mainstream, but I promise you that it works. You just need to stay focused and disciplined. Slow and steady wins the right race. And of course, I am not against the other two uh, investing strategies out there, long-term investing strategies out there, growth investing or dividend-focused investing. They, you know, all three strategies work: growth, dividend, income. They all invest in the same types of uh, companies. Uh, the total return works long-term. It's how you get your return that's different, right? So. What will I cover in this video? Well, first of all, I'll show you a quick bird's eye view, a quick overview of my six accounts so you could actually see the value of my six accounts. Uh, this is basically just to prove to you that the figures in my title and the thumbnail are 100% legit. And after that, I will show you my portfolio broken down in spreadsheets because it's much easier to digest because it's really separated in two. I have my main portfolio, uh, which is my cash account and the two TFSA accounts, mine and my wife's. And then I have my retirement accounts, which is three accounts total, my retirement account, my wife's retirement account, and my Lira account, which is just a small locked in retirement account. So that's how I have my portfolio separated. And don't forget, you could download the spreadsheet or my portfolio for free on my website, passiveincomeinvesting.ca. Just click on free tools and resources at the top and it will be the very, very first download. I'm telling you because when I show the spreadsheets, it could be, appear a little bit small on the screen. So if you wanna download it, you could always do that and follow along with, you, with me. So without further ado, let's check out my entire portfolio from A to Z together right now. All right, everyone. So this is the portfolio overview with Passive. So Passive is a software rebalancing or portfolio tracker uh, tool, which I have now uh, since you know it comes free or the elite membership actually comes free with Quest Rate. So I'll show it to you here because it's just the easiest way. And as you could see, I'm filming this here on September 4th, sorry, September 1st. 
and the market is definitely down it has been down for a couple of days so total value is 967 544 so that's where you actually see you know the this is just what my entire portfolio is worth in canadian dollars all six accounts as you could see here i have it separated into i have my main portfolio here which is my joint cash account between my wife and i uh, my TFSA, my wife's TFSA. So this is the main portfolio. So my main portfolio is those three accounts and my retirement accounts is my Lira, my RSP, and Erica's RSP. So total is 967. You actually see the, the breakdown here, total of the uh, three, uh, three accounts in my main portfolio combined, 576 and a little something and total value of my retirement accounts combined is 390. So that's just to show you that what I'm telling you is completely legit, everyone. Now let's check out the a portfolio broken down in spreadsheets and it's going to be separated in two parts. I'll cover my retirement accounts first, which is pretty much all U.S. listed funds. Uh, there's an exception or two, but I'll show you that in a second. So uh, I'll show you that first and then we'll go to the main portfolio, which is basically what, you know, the passive income that I live off of is with these three accounts. So essentially the main portfolio, I extract the income that gets generated. I extract it every month and the retirement accounts, of course, you know how these work, right? The registered accounts they are not designed to extract just yet. It's designed uh, to extract later on when you turn your, your RRSPs into RIFs account, RIF accounts. So my Lira and my wife's RRSP are on drip. They're dripping and my RRSP, I manually drip. So it's not an automatic drip. I get the dividends every month and I reinvest them manually every single month. So let's take a look at the portfolio together, guys. All right, so we'll start with the retirement accounts first, US listed funds. So like I showed you before, it's separated in three accounts, right? You got my RRSP here, my wife's RRSP here, and my little, little Lira here. And the Lira and my wife's RRSP are, are, are dripping. They're dripping away. They're compounding interesting away. And my RRSP, same thing, but I do it manually every single month, just like just because I like to have fun. This is definitely my fun and YOLO account. This is where I go nuts a little bit with this RRSP. So let's start with the changes I made. So if I go to my RRSP tracker, so um, just like in August, so I actually did this transaction today. I trimmed my OPP position again by another 10K. So I only have 10K left in it. And I bought a really cool ETN that I liked, BDCX, which is which focuses on business development companies in the US. So this is something really niche that I don't have access to at all on the Canadian stock market. And you know, I like the yield and I like the fa fact that it's an index. Uh, I'll probably make a video on BDCs on the US in a little bit. I have one planned, but basically BDCs are kind of like REITs. They're the, they're definitely income oriented, and um, you know they have to pay ninety percent out uh, to the investors in income. So I really really like that. This is basically uh, an index that has m most, if not all, the BDCs in the US, and on top of that, it has fifty percent leverage. So it's kind of like the same thing CEFD does with closed end funds except they do it with with bdc so i trimmed my opp position from 20k to 10k again everyone it's not because i don't like opp it's just because honestly i'm a bit disenchanted with fixed income that's number one number two um it, it's pretty boring and you know i don't want to have anything boring in my rsp this is actually my, my fun account and i already have i feel enough uh, fixed income elsewhere either with cefd there's a lot of fixed income in there and i also have off, which is um, you know another good fixed income leveraged fixed income fund on the U.S. stock market. I have Goth in my wife's account. So will I eventually trim it down to zero? I would say maybe. I don't know if it's going to be next month. I mean, every time I'm doing this, I am taking a, a loss because my ACB is 1388 and the stock price is like 10 something. So either way, this is my long term fun account. So I don't really care. But you know, just keep that in mind that you don't have to follow exactly what I'm doing. So very easy in terms of outline here, how I organize things, right? This is just how much I put into my RSP uh, since the beginning. So this is just my RSP contribution. This is the total value of my account, just like we saw in passive 197. So and my overall return is just based on, on these two numbers, right? So, and same thing for the other accounts as well. So in terms of changes, that's pretty much the only change I made. Uh, trim down o OPP to get a little bit of BDCX. So in terms of positions, let's go through them one by one. And you could clearly see a trend happening here. And I think this is probably what's gonna happen is that CLM, SVOL and CEFD are gonna be my primary positions and everything else are really gonna be secondary niche positions, which probably won't go over 15K at the moment until these guys reach 
uh, much, much higher. So uh, CLM, obviously, this is the Cornerstone Strategic Value Fund, um, a really good high yield fund that resets its dividend annually, uh, making really, really high yield on this. Keep in mind that the dividend is set to uh, reset uh, in uh, two months from now, actually, at the end of October, and it's set to decrease significantly. So this is just how it's designed. It gets reset annually at 21% of the NAV. But keep in mind, if the, if the dividend reduces, it means that the CLM has a stronger chance to rise in stock price, right? Because the, the, the dividend just gets taken from the NAV. So if it's taking less, if it's taking a lot less, well, then the stock price has a chance to go up. CLM is actually holds a lot of boring stuff. It holds mostly blue chips. Uh, on the U.S. stock market, SVOL, I keep loving this one. Every month that goes forward, they re they declared another distribution of thirty two cents. So it seems to be very, very, very consistent. Definitely going to be a really primary position in my RSP going forward. Really like it. CEFD is an all in one closed end fund solution uh, by e UBS e -Track. So it's an ETN and it has fifty percent leverage on top of that. So think of this as you know you're buying all the closed end funds on the US market. Really, really nice yield. I think it's like 14, 15 now. It's probably, it, it's a bit lower now. So these three, I would consider them always good pickups. Maybe just be careful with CLM. You know, if, if the premium is too big, I wouldn't pick it up. Uh, but these are definitely my, gonna be my prime positions in my RSP for now. Uh, BDCX is the one I recently added. So again, BDCs, really cool asset class that's not really found in the Canadian stock market. It actually reminds me, I think like Alaris, remember Alaris Royalty? I used to have that company. So the, BDCs kind of does what that company does. They, they, they finance or they help uh, smaller, medium-sized businesses. They take a piece of their business. They give them loans. So they're, think of them like a little bank. That's what BDCs do. But uh, you just can't compare on the uh, on the American stock market. There's a lot of them. Uh, Eris is, is definitely the the biggest one. But I'll make a video on BDCs to tell you, show you guys about them. But you know, 15 and a half percent yield right now. Uh, it was very attractive, so I picked some up. OPP, like we like I explained. Uh, trimmed a little bit. It, it's okay for fixed income. The reason why it has been doing horribly, by the way, is because it's very heavy on mortgage REIT. So if I actually would have known about these ETNs before, so eTrax actually has another ETN called MVRL, which has all the best mortgage or all the mortgage REITs in the US. So I probably wouldn't have gotten OPP or ORC uh, for that matter, if I knew about it, but um, you know, OPP is still okay because it, it has that collaboration with River North, so it has some tactical closed end fund. But I definitely like Riv better than OPP. Uh, HGLB, a little closed end fund that is always doing well for me. Uh, you know, they keep increasing their dividend every year. Wow, all wow, these emails keep div increasing their dividend every year. They have a policy just like CLM, OPP, RIV, where they reset it annually based on NAV, and it's only 8.5%. So it's actually set to increase again. I might hit 13% yield, so I can't complain. It's always trading at a big discount for some reason. So always good to pick this one up. Orc just had a reverse split. So this one is really, really not doing well and is literally my last single company. Well, actually, no, I still have a marijuana stock in my main portfolio, but I have I don't even list it because I can always just forget it. I, I kind of like buried in the closet. I don't even care about it anymore. But Orc is pretty much my last single stock I have in my retirement accounts. Um, and it, all it has is mortgage REITs um, leveraged. So it had a split and the dividend uh, basically is uh, 16 cents a month. I don't know, that's their newest dividend. So in my ACB, I just multiplied it by five and I just let put the dividend at 1.92, which translates to 16 cents a month. I don't know if it's gonna keep being 16 cents a month, but hey, either way, you know what? Still making $100 a month on it, the yield of under eight. So I'm still gonna keep it. I'm just going to let the income accumulate and hopefully I'll break even on this with the income and maybe I'll switch this to either CEFD or MVRL as well. Uh, SLVO USOI is the other uh, ETNs that I have. These ones are just, you know, they're pretty crazy. This is pretty much the craziest two things I have. It, you know, the, the covered cost strategy on commodities, so on silver and on oil, you could tell from the stock price that it doesn't really work long term and you got to expect some you know, big fluctuations in the dividend. So these are definitely going to stay niche positions. USOI, of course, always looks interesting because the yield is really, really high. But 
keep in mind that the dividend could fluctuate greatly. So right now, uh, and, and you know, these annual distribution rates are just based on the last three distributions. They could vary um, greatly. So the silver one hasn't been doing that well because silver is dropping, which I don't understand why. If there's inflation, silver and gold should go up. So, you know, who, who even knows what's going on? Who cares anyway? As long as I get paid every month, I'm fine. USOI um, on oil. So it's been doing really, you know, has big distributions recently because oil rallied. So is that going to continue? Probably not. So these two, you know, all, all the secondary positions I have, everyone, keep in mind, the more niche they are, the more it should uh, have some caution. Last but not least is the Ether uh, ETF, the yield ETF. So this is actually ETHY.U because I want to keep everything US currency in, um, in the RSPs. Um, so I got ETHY.U. So they, they actually announced a little increase in the distribution for the last month. So I'm making a little under 10% if you take the average of the last three distributions. Not so bad. So overall, you know, this is, again, this is my crazy fun YOLO account. Uh, making a little over 15% yield. Keep in mind, this could fluctuate, especially in two months when the CLM distribution gets cut. But hey, you know, I like to have fun with this account and I manually reinvest. So uh, this is basically, you know, you could expect a little bit of, you know, transactions pretty much every month or every two months, something like that. So uh, Erica's RSP, that's definitely the model you want to follow if you're just a moderate investor, because this one just has what I feel are more the baseline and good foundations stuff on the uh, American stock market in terms of covered calls. So QYLD, RYLD are the biggest positions. I also got HYLD.U. So, you know, I was trying to decide, you know, because I need to contribute a, a, a little more this year to Erica's RRSP to offset some capital gains that I did. So I have about 35,000 actually left to go. So I was really thinking about this for a long time, what should I put it in more QYLD, RYLD, or should I add XYLD? I was even thinking of adding Jeppy. But then I'm like, you know what I want with the leverage? And you know, why get XYLD, QYLD, or RYLD when I could just get HYLD.U? It's at 13% yield right now. It has leverage. This is going to be on drip for like 18 years anyway. So I might as well. So I decided to go with H yield. So that's where I'm going to be pouring uh, a lot of money in in the next couple of months here and then of course i have ra which is my favorite closed end fund for real assets on the u.s stock market i trust brookfield in here you have everything you need there, there's actually a lot of mortgage reits in here as well but there's other stuff like infrastructure natural resources there's both fixed income and equities here and it has a nice yield as well. RIV is an all-in-one closed-end fund solution, kind of like CEFD is, except it's a little bit more moderate. It's definitely, I like it better than OPP for sure. It's um, managed by River North. So these guys basically hunt down closed-end funds that are trading at discounts. Uh, they use a little bit of leverage here, which is why it's a little, it's interesting. The yield is pretty high. So this one also is set to reduce its dividend if the NAV stays the same, but that's okay. This is just going to keep compounding. And then I have a small position in Goth. That's the smallest position. So uh, that's it for the RSPs. I do have a Lira account, small Lira account. When I just put it all in the Bitcoin yield uh, ETF, I'm actually down. I lost half. Well, actually, I didn't lose anything. I, I correct myself because this is just a fantasy. You only lose when you sell. But this is just uh, kind of like a Hail Mary. I just decided to go put it all in Bitcoin. It was just uh, uh, my pension uh, left over from Air Canada back in the day. So uh, all, all good. This one is just going to compound away and hopefully who knows what Bitcoin does in the next 10, 15, 18 years. So this is not going to be touched for the next 18 years. So I'm actually happy that it's down because now it's going to drip at a low, low price. So that is the RRSPs or the retirement accounts, everyone. So total, you know, I tried to put everything in Canadian dollars and totals. So you're looking at 37.37 USD uh, and 206 Canadian. That's from this one here, the Lira. So with the exchange, which is about a, a 130 here, you're looking at about a little over 5K a month, which is just being reinvested, which is just, uh, you know, being dripped or manually dripped. So I consider our retirement accounts pretty much like a super safety net, a super plan B. It's just exciting to see that 
compound interest go and you know i get a lot of questions why are you going with the income stuff if you're you don't need you're not using the income or you know, why don't you just go with the growth stuff well you know what i'm going to make a video on this topic i feel like it's a good question but in short the answer is because i just feel more comfortable with the income stuff getting the return every month instead of depending on the stock market i mean what if when i want to start using it in 18 years the stock market tanks well the stock market go up in for the next 18 years i have no idea so i'd rather do it this way and just getting compound interest so now let's take a look at the canadian listed stuff let's look at my main portfolio which is our two tfsas and cash account all right main portfolio this is the passive income that i live off of on a month-to-month -month basis it's all canadian listed and it's a combination of the three accounts like i keep mentioning so uh total invested or how much i put in is actually 629 and the value like we saw in the passive is 576 so i am down uh, on it but you know this number changes and i really really don't care about it because i'm a buy and hold investor this you know next year could be completely different in five years it could be completely different on a month to month month to month basis so i don't really care so although it seems like i'm not doing well here if you're looking at the totals don't forget that i'm generating passive income and so far i've generated 185,000 of passive income that's realized passive income realized return and also some capital realized capital gains by the streamlining and the selling that i've done in the last uh, couple of years and most of this has to do with because i had to sell some stuff for my panamanian visa so uh, together, I actually have to, almost 300,000 of realized gains. So it would be this number plus 299, 299,000 that you would have to compare the, to the 629. And that would mean I'm doing actually fairly well. So let's go through each fund one by one here. First, let me tell you uh, of the change I did. So last month, I was telling you I was contemplating getting rid of DS. A really nice fund, closed end fund from Quadrivest. That's not a split fund. It's Dividend 15's twin brother. I was up on it significantly. I decided to 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 sell it. Um, so that's the the big change I I did here for uh, uh, for last month for this month. So I sold 25 my 25k worth of DS. I actually made a five thousand dollar profit on it. I got 30k. How did I did how did I distribute the 30k? Well, it should be no surprise. Most of it went to HYLD, which has really really good value right now. 5k went to HDIF just because HDIF has that uh, they added a Canadian listed or Canadian ETF in there. So I figure I put 5k in there to make up for the Canadian holdings that DS has and had. And I also put 5k in DFN, which had the same thing. So um, that's basically what I did. And that actually increased my uh, my in passive income by about $60 which is pretty good so super lean and mean portfolio here everyone i'm at, i'm down to 15 holdings and every single one of my holdings except the btcy and ethy uses covered calls and leverage uh, basically well maybe not eit but most of them at least i could say for a fact use leverage so i'm a long-term investor so i definitely want stuff that has Investing in leverage funds. So every single thing you can do, it has to. best company that have the big powerful brands and the best healthcare companies you also have txf which is my favorite technology specific covered call etf then you have glcc which is gold and precious metal producers which hasn't been doing that well so i have 16.69 percent of my total portfolio in h yield right now and it's giving me almost a thousand dollars a month just with this so next one i have hdiv hdiv just did its one year anniversary uh, also a great breakdown has you know it's a little bit more canadian focused and hyld is definitely more us focus um so hdiv hdiv is the third all-in-one covered call etf from harvest so this actually combines the six cover six popular covered call etfs from harvest all in one with 25 percent leverage that's what these three do so these three are definitely i would say part of my big six and the top or my favorite out of the, the big six so all just these three make up 33 a third of my portfolio 
So that goes to show you how good I, you know, how much I really like these. And the last two ETFs that I have are the crypto ones, obviously BTCY, ETHY, which I never want to make more than 10% total. Right now it's 9.70%, even though I'm always tempted to buy more now. I'm going to wait because I have to focus on uh, Erica's RSP first, but I'll, I definitely want to add more to these. Um, but I try, I, I don't want to go over 10%. So, um, you know, the Bitcoin one, these are my, my lowest yields now because of the dividend reductions. Um, so Bitcoin is staying relatively stable at four cents a month. I don't know if it will go keep going down or I'm sure it will go up eventually when Bitcoin recovers, but 6% off just by holding Bitcoin for the long term, not so bad. The Ether one, I'm at 4.55. So this is, you know, not that great, but what can I do? Uh, keep in mind, these annual di distribution rates are just the average based on the last three months. So don't forget if Ether starts picking up or Bitcoin starts picking up, the dividends will probably increase substantially. So I'm not worried. I'm just going to wait it out. I mean, total overall, I'm at 10.65% yield, making 55.86. So um, next section is the closed end funds and split funds. So the clo in terms of closed end fund, the only one I have left is EIT because I got rid of DS. So EIT is definitely my OG, one of my, my big six as well, part of the big six. I have 8.75% in here. It's been doing really, really strong because it has no technology, right? It has a lot of energy. And since it has no technology, it has a lot of energy. It's actually been doing really, really well consistent 10 cents a month they haven't missed a beat making over 11 percent yield here so I, I really can't complain uh speaking of you know the yields on hdiv and hdiv are a lot higher now it's just because you know i have um higher book prices but i think hdiv just passed 10 percent hdiv is in the high nines and hyld is actually uh, at 13 percent plus yield so I'm, I'm very jealous of you guys who are loading up on these three especially hyld I wish I could do it, but you know I need to, I need to fill priorities. Everyone's got their priorities. So once the RSPs are full, which is the last year I'm ever going to be contributing to my RSP, I'm going to be going full pin on my main portfolio. Don't you worry. So that's EIT. Then we have all the split funds. The rest are the split funds. So I have DFN and FTN from Quadravest. Uh, no surprises. No dividend misses recently. And by the way, I track all every all the information about the split fund I track here. So when was the first distribution? How many distributions did it miss? Uh, how many distributions that I miss, et cetera, et cetera. So a really nice yield on DFN here, 15. FTN, my yield's a little bit lower because of the reverse split they had uh, back in December 2020. But I add a little bit more and I'm making almost 11%. So I really, really can't complain. Uh, LBS is awesome. Um, I you know, missed a few dividends for sure. They missed eight in 2020, but uh, LBS is good. It has the six banks and the four life goals. Um, SBC, uh, also from Brompton. So LBS, SBC, GDB, DGS, PWI, all from Brompton, um, making nice yields here. So SBC is just the six banks. This is my go-to uh, for just the six banks, making really, really nice yield on it here, 16%. BK is the competitor, of course. GDV, also part of the big six. That's number five out of the big six. I really like it because it's uh, very, very well diversified, uh, trading at a premium right now. Uh, DGS is DFN's competitor, Canadian dividend stocks, um, a little bit more higher yield, but higher yield, you got to expect missed, missing dividends. There's more of a chance, right? But uh, DGS is, you know, if you look at the stocks inside, very well diversified blue chip stocks there, just like DFN, but a little bit more variety. PWI is the sustainable power and infrastructure stock. So it has a lot of utilities and infrastructure, real assets, chemical companies, just boring salt of the earth companies. Haven't missed the dividend, so I'm happy about that. Uh, pretty low yield though. Uh, it's getting more and more interesting now, however, because the premium is getting lower. ENS is, uh, you know, a split fund that only has one company. So I know I say I don't invest in individual companies, but I guess the exception is ENS. So Enbridge is definitely a good stock to do a split fund on because it keeps growing their dividend. So I really can't complain. I'm making a nice yield of almost 12%. This one has been trading at a slight discount. Maybe now um, it's at a small premium. So if ever you want to pick up some ENS, a good time right now. And RS is, is the sixth of my big six. This is my go-to for real estate. Uh, it's unique. It's the only real estate split fund and it has 
uh, basically 15 to 18 blue chip REITs, mostly Canadian, so Rio Can, Smart Centers, Crombie, Choice, Canadian Apartment REIT, all the best blue chip REITs with synthetic leverage, of course, because it's a split fund. So this, you know, although it's not as diversified as my other uh, you know, the other five in the big six, it's basically I add this one because everything else doesn't have much real estate or no real estate at all. So I like real estate. I don't own real estate personally. So I always like to keep 10% real estate. So our expect RS to always be approximately 10% of my portfolio. So that's my entire portfolio, everyone from A to Z. Once again, those are the changes I've made. I'm pretty much probably going to stick with these fee this, these 15 for a really, really, really long time. Uh, and, uh, you know, can't complain. These are my totals here. I'll probably make another short video just quickly going over more in detail of how I structured my portfolio, the totals, what all this stuff means. So stay tuned for that. But that is my entire portfolio from A to Z once again. Thank you so much for watching, everyone. I really appreciate it. Don't forget to hit that thumbs up button, that like button, and make sure you're subscribed not to miss out on my future content. Of course, hit that little bell next to the subscribe button so you're notified for any new content that comes out. Also, make sure to visit our website, passiveincomeinvesting.ca. That's where you could purchase my digital product, the Ultimate DIY Investing Package, which is on version four right now. It comes with lifetime updates, so you only have to buy it once, which is awesome. So this is a companion tool. It's a reference tool that will help you build your own portfolio according to your needs and goals. And it covers both the Canadian and American and U.S. stock markets. So make sure to check it out. I have a video explaining from A to Z exactly what the product is. I showcase it. So there's no surprises. If you're interested, make sure to check out that video. Also right there on my website on the homepage, I do offer a one-on-one -on -one coaching session with me so this is a one hour zoom call with yours truly for a, you know in case you need personalized help i'll answer all your questions and i'll help you best i can just remember i am not a licensed financial planner or financial advisor these, these are just going to be a uh, friendly uh, conversation right it's just going to be my opinions but if ever you're looking for that personalized touch that personalized help you could book a one-on-one -on -one with me make sure to check out the message on top of that calendar uh, that will give you a status of my bookings uh, for that month also, we do have a Facebook group, great Facebook group, over 12,000 members. So make sure to join our community. The group is called Passive Income Investing, a nice Facebook group where everyone is sharing their thoughts and opinions and sharing their experiences. So it's a really nice group. We make sure to stay on top of the scam and the spams and we delete those right away. So make sure to join our Facebook group. If ever you want something more personalized with us, you could uh, follow us on Instagram. That's where we post more personal things on our adventures here in Panama. So follow us on Instagram if you want and how do i always leave you continue to stay safe continue to stay healthy and of course stay passive see you next time